The game is loud and back! And this time is for your official dose of gaming goodness in Game Life Episode 7. Wait a second, that was my line? Please oh, stay. <laughs> Don't cry for me, Argentina! Okay, I won't because I'm just gonna say the games we're reviewing today, or I'm reviewing. Alright, what are you doing? I'm doing a non-Nintendo system <laughs> and a non-Nintendo game. How do you like that? A non-Nintendo system and a non-Nintendo game? Jump into the hood, the fact you're scaring the crap out of me! Oh, right, and you're scaring the crap out of me because you're doing a Mario game. What the hell is that? Yeah, a Mario game. I mean, come on. You gotta love Mario no matter what fan you are, so simple as that. I feel that. But wait, hold on. I gotta pull something from my ass right here for a moment. What's this? A Scooby Doo game? Oh, yes, indeed. I'm the only one that has the balls to review Scooby Doo on that. Oh, great. Scooby Doo now. <laughs> Yeah! It's What's next? <laughs> well, what, what do we have here? Alex? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah me here. I thought you were going to be a red man. What the hell's going on? Yeah. I said the crash come the on, party. come Yeah, come on. Crash the party. Yeah, we'll crash the party. I don't yeah. wait for the party. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I took a trip to the arcade to review Mario Kart GP. Oh, so much Oh, more Mario yeah, games. Yeah, Mario, oh. Mario, Mario, Mario. Uh, come on. Come on, uh, I take a break from Nintendo, and you guys bring it back for you. We bring it, we refresh your memory. Uh, yeah. Come yeah. on, what is this? You can find out everything that's gonna happen on Game Life with all the shenanigans that's going on right here on the show on Game Life right now. on Game Life, I gave Liberty City Stories a 4, the lowest score in Game Life. However, all games must be reviewed and now I'm gonna take a shot at Scooby-Doo Unmasked for the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and the Xbox. But right now I'm gonna be reviewing the PlayStation 2 version. So, let's take a look and see if this is any worse than Grand Theft Auto. These days, the average platform games seem to be numbered, and in fact that is true. However, they are still around, but you may have to lower your standards and buy a Scooby-Doo game. However, this really is not as bad as you think. The graphics do look cartoony, well, I got news for you, so did the actual show. The whole purpose of it is not to have some enhanced 3D graphics like Halo, but though to make it look like a cartoon, just like the cartoon itself. The sound is very good, and the voice acting, well... The one that did Scooby could have done a little bit better, but besides that, it's actually pretty good. The background music, though, it definitely fits the mood. It does have that spooky, cartoony sense of music that you would hear in Scooby-Doo. The gameplay is pretty simple, hell, even a kid could do it. This is just one of those games you may want to play if you are extremely bored. All you gotta do is go around and collect Scooby snacks while searching for clues, which later you must return to Velma in order to solve the mystery. However though, there are some scenes where you do have to fight some monsters, and usually those fights are very quick. However, later on in the game, there are some pretty cool things that will have you turn into Batman Scooby and Robin Hood Scooby, making you shoot bow and arrows, which is actually pretty cool. I think that a lot of people that have really trashed on this game have not played it. Do not get me wrong, however, there are two problems that I really don't like about this game. The first one is the camera. The camera, you cannot control it using the analog stick, and in fact it makes the game worse, as sometimes 
okay, I lie. Often, the camera will get in your way of what you're supposed to do. Another thing is the controls. Well, simply enough access jump and then the D-pad or the analog stick as you walk. There are some other controls that really make this game a little less exciting than the cartoon was. And trust me, I love my Scooby-Doo cartoons. So basically, I would say that if you love Scooby-Doo as a kid, or for some reason if you still watch it on the Cartoon Network, definitely go out and at least rent this game. And who knows, maybe buy it considering that right now you can probably find it for 10 bucks used at your local video game store. With the very good voice acting and the graphics accurate enough to go and pick the cartoon, there really aren't many downsides. Unless, of course, you have the sound effects. But. Considering that the story is actually accurate to the cartoon with many games based on any TV thing don't do, I'm gonna have to give this game a 6 out of 10. Some of you may be surprised about what I'm about to review. Yes, that's right, the Gamers Lounge has an Xbox 360 that is ready to be reviewed, and I get the honors of doing it. So, in order to set up your Xbox 360, you're going to need these three component cables and these three RCA uh, cables, which come with the premium system. However, the RCA cables only come with the um, standard, no component in the um, standard one. Uh, the premium is $399, while the standard is $299, but with the premium you get the hard drive and it's a lot better so you can store your stuff on there. And you can actually save your games without buying $40 memory cards and whatnot. So, let's go plug these component and RCA cables into the back of the Gamers Lounge TV. Oh, but wait, before I do that, I'm going to have to set the switch on the AV uh, cable to TV or else it won't work, which the Xbox manual really doesn't clearly state all that well. So, now that I've done that, we can go play some games. Alright, so before I get started with the interface and everything, I just wanted to point out that there, there's a huge power brick for the Xbox 360 and you're going to need some extra space for this. Just wanted to point that out. Uh, okay, so I have a controller with me. Guess how you turn the Xbox 360 on? The lazy man's way. You press the guide button in the middle and the system should turn on with a little bit of time okay and it signs you in automatically you get a profile or is this called game life show uh, it's actually very cool you can customize the how the uh, interface looks in a number of different ways you can get on Xbox Live, go to the Marketplace, uh, which provides free game demos and um, Xbox Live Arcade games. However, you do have to pay for some game content and new themes and pictures, although some game content is free. Now here's the real, um, I guess you could say the games page on the interface is the real meat of the system 
you can see your achievements that you have in games, which are little goals or accomplishments. They're just for bragging rights. You can see, you can play your Xbox Live Arcade games, your demos, all of the demos you have, which is very cool. Uh, you can watch videos. Um, I mean, okay, the one thing that really pisses me off is that Microsoft bundles stuff with their system, like music. I didn't put this type of music on there. Where did it come from? Oh wait, Microsoft is stupid enough to load their hard drives with music and stuff. It pisses me off. And they also load the hard drive with videos too. I mean, okay, I look inside Xbox 360, that's fine, but rebuilding Titanic? What the hell? I don't want to watch Titanic. Oh, boy, Microsoft, got a clue for once. Alright, and here's all the settings you can adjust. I mean, just a standard early settings. Really, the Xbox 360 doesn't have any real triple A titles. Uh, I mean, we have four games in the Gamers Lounge here, and none are really worth any attention except for Burnout Revenge, which is on other systems, I might add. So, I mean, there's no real exclusive great titles, and that's really one of the downfalls of the 360, although the interface of it is really nice, it's just that there's no games to play, you know, or no real great games to play on, rather. I mean, overall, just because of the games, and because you have to pay for some content on Marketplace, I mean, okay, the Geometry Wars games, the actual games, those are fine, but like, gamer pictures, and things. Come on, you should get that stuff for free. And also game, extra game content. So, I mean, really, I can't really recommend this or not recommend it. It's really up to you. So I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. And I'm going to shut this console down right now without even pressing anything. Bye bye, Xbox 360. Jeff Mancino, I will review Disney Quest. Come on. Ah! Hey guys, I'm Jeff Mancino from Game Life, and this is. Uh, am I on search? Good friend from the Mega 60 forums, and we're here to review the interactive adventure Disney Quest. Now, this is a very intuitive place with five floors of interactive gaming. Is it any fun? There's a game and a ride called Ride the Comics. And in it, you fight the comics and you use a lightsaber, which you wield near your cross for some reason. Oh, you're just at home. I'm just gonna focus in on your crotch and go in and out. What? Now. <laughs> this is retarded. <laughs> you think they're having fun here?
Lunar Lander right now, and uh, are you having a fun time? Best game I've played all day. <laughs> Definitely. You should watch where you're going, sir. Did we ever do anything decent? Oh, dad. What? Did we do anything decent? No. So, Iron Surge, what do you think about this request? Well, I can't say I might like it, but I think so. I can't say I like it very much. I can't say you like it very much. No, no. The games aren't very much like Well, what about uh, the active, the, the unique games up there? Well, I did like Lunar Landing. It's a nice game. It's all very intuitive. It's made for kids. As you can see, with my reviews over there, even the kids wouldn't find this very entertaining unless they're stupid and they have Down syndrome. You know, the games suck. The ones that didn't suck, you couldn't get to because the lines were way too long. Yes. Lines were huge. What do we give this game out to? Well, Personally, I would give it four spicy sandwiches out of ten. <laughs> Nintendo systems have been the home of Mario forever. Years after years, it's been on a Nintendo system. But times have changed and a fan made game has debuted on the PC called Mario Forever. In this exclusive title for the PC, you're going to find elements borrowed from Super Mario 1, 2, Yoshi's Island, Super Mario World, and the whole Mario franchise. So let's take a look at this game. This game borrows a lot of elements from previous installments of the Mario franchise to make Mario Forever. In fact, this hidden gem is one that you should be playing right now as soon as I finish my review. And here's why. The graphics are 2D and personally, I love the 2D Mario better than the 3D Mario that we have today. It was so fun, it was so unique, yet so simple. It, it was just great. And this is no different. Of course, though, at first look, it does look a lot like Mario 1 in the way that the levels are designed and, well, put on the map. However, the one interesting fact that I do love is that castles don't always come after World 1 or 2 or 3-4. Like, for example, in World 2, you will notice that it goes up to 2-5 before going to the castle, and in fact, this makes it a little bit better. The sound, for the most part, is taken from Super Mario World, and you will notice that as soon as you play the game. You will notice that the music and the sound effects are taken from Mario World, and, you know, I really can't diss it. I do love that part, however, it would have been nice if it returned to the original Super Mario Bros. sound effects, but oh well, what can you do? The gameplay, as you can expect, is the same as a lot of Mario Bros. games. 
you go and jump, collect coins while stomping on enemies and defeating Bowser. However, Bowser is different in the sense that you cannot simply jump over him and then hit a thing at the end of the bridge to go and make him fall into the lava. You actually gotta defeat him by shooting him numerous times or by stomping on him. Unfortunately, Mario fans of today may be disappointed about the fact that there are no double or triple or wall jumps in there. It is just basic jump, shoot fireballs, and, well, everything that made Super Mario Bros. 1 so famous. The controls are very responsive, as for this game you only play with the Z and X button, along with, of course, the enter button as your star. Z is to jump, X is to shoot the fireballs whenever you have them, which in this game I would not be surprised if you didn't have them too long, because the difficulty is actually kind of hard compared to other Mario games. In fact, in some levels, you will find yourself faced with Koopa after Koopa after Koopa after Goomba after Goomba. It's just a pain in the ass, but yeah, that's so much fun. You're gonna want to play this all day, all night. Hell, take it to school with you. Go play it during class. You can do better things than learn about history, right? What begun as a simple 2D based Mario game actually turns out to be pretty good even though it does borrow a lot from the previous Mario installments. I must give this game a 8 out of 10. It's a very well done fan made game for the PC that you or any Mario fan will enjoy. Alright, I went from reviewing the 360, and now, of course, 360 needs some games, so I'm reviewing Far Cry Instinct's Predator for, you guessed it, the 360. So, I guess we're trying something new here. Uh, my buddy Alex is controlling the game right now, and I'm just gonna walk you through it while he's playing and you there's uh, of course the storyline is simple once you load up the game there uh your guy who gets who's on a tropical island who's just relaxing enjoying a vacation and then you get attacked and your job is to get off the island so and then, of course, on the way, you get attacked by many bad guys and stuff, so you're going to want to kind of avoid them and use stealth to take them out, which I find really quite annoying, uh, and it's just, it just makes the game not that much fun to play. Uh, you get a lot of weapons, and of course, this is even the uh, rookie difficulty, the lowest difficulty. And this game is hard. I mean, I don't have the patience for stealth, and I mean, it's just, oh, it's horrible. But you can have many vehicles to drive, which are fun. At first, the physics and the enemy AI is, is actually very good. Uh, they talk to each other and it's actually very intuitive and makes the game very realistic, but at the same time, it's not that great. Um, the graphics, however, are spectacular. Although, I would have to say for the 360, they're not up to par with what it can do. However, uh, 
it definitely does match up to the PC version. Uh, there's also an extra campaign called Evolutions, which did come out for the Xbox, so if you have an Xbox, an original Xbox, you might want to pick up that instead, because at a $60 price point, wow, that's not good. <laughs> it's pretty expensive, and it's, it'll, it'll definitely rob the bank for you. The music definitely fits. No, like, brand name EA tracks type crap in this game. It's all orchestral. It's very well done, and I love it. All right, in order to show off the multiplayer aspects of this game, we thought it would be cool if we could show you a little head-to-head -head action. Me against Alex, so check it out right now and see who's going to win. All right, so before we start, let's check out some of the features of this game, such as the Xbox Live support, which we can't do because we're not connected, but that's very cool and but the thing that's great about that is that the map management type thing which allows you to create your own maps and it's a very complex tool but in Xbox Live you can download those maps in like about 30 seconds on demand so like you can actually play on other people's maps which is <laughs> which is very cool, and I would like to see more games do that. Now, multiplayer supports up to four people simultaneously. Although, there are no bots in this, which is kind of disappointing and makes the game a little bit boring at times if there's only two people. So, but, but there's a plethora of maps, and you can set all types of other options. Day, Far Cry Instinct's Predator is probably not worth your time and money. The only redeeming qualities about this game are its graphics and sound. I mean, I just can't stand the stealth gameplay. I know some of you are gonna basically shoot me for this or punch me with a barrel attack. Whichever one you want to do. I have to give this game a 5 out of 10. Remember in those days when Nintendo was king of the arcades? Well, those days are back thanks to Mario Kart GP for the arcade. This is one of the two games in recent times that was ported to the arcade along with F-Zero AX. Both games were made by Namco and Nintendo with help from Sega. So here's my review of Mario Kart Arcade GP. Players can race as one of 11 characters in 24 tracks. Those characters are Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach, Toad, Yoshi, Donkey Kong, Wario, Bowser from the Nintendo franchises, Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, and Blinky from the Namco franchises. There are six stages in Mario Kart GP, with each with a different theme, from the beach theme in the Mario stage to the jungle theme in the Donkey Kong stage. Each stage has four tracks, the first two are in the normal mode, and the final two are backwards, similar to the past Mario Kart games with the mirror mode. The player can earn the backwards tracks by beating the two normal tracks. Also, their coins are scattered around the tracks. Picking up these coins make the player's cart go slightly faster, like in Mario Kart for the Super Nintendo. Like any other Mario Kart game, the last course is Rainbow Road. The other stages consist of Bowser's stage, Wario stage, Donkey Kong stage, and Pac-Man stage. A cool thing about this arcade cabinet is that it houses a camera that will take a photograph of the player's face. The photo is customized depending on who you choose as your character that you play as. No Mario Kart game is complete without items. Believe me when I say that since there are a barrage of items new and old. 
New items like pythons and black shells can take down the competition faster, thanks to the ability of locking onto a cart using a targeting radical. While old items like mushrooms give your cart small boosts of speed, mushrooms come in handy in the well-known time trial mode, a mode that has been in every recent game, whether it be Mario Kart or Namco's own Ridge Racer. You can go head to head with four other players, but the arcade that I was at only had two cabinets. The graphics are nearly identical to the GameCube's Mario Kart Double Dash. Lush, beautiful environments combined with chaotic items and smooth animations make this game very pretty among other arcade games. The sound is excellent, with good music, sound effects, and voiceovers, but if you're playing in the arcade like I was, it may be tough to hear very clearly. I'd say one of the downsides of this game is how many quarters or tokens that it gets off. After each race, you're gonna have to put more and more quarters in, or tokens, whatever you choose, and that can really hamper your budget. What better way to accentuate the Mario Kart franchise by porting to the arcade? It's a great idea by Namco, Sega, and Nintendo. So, this game has a lot of vivid colors, music we all know and love, the sound effects that are familiar to us, the items, the ability to take a, have your picture taken, the uh, built-in camera system. It's awesome. This game gets an 8.5 out of 10. Well, that wraps up another hectic edition of Game Life. It was so hectic that I didn't even review one Nintendo game. Take that, Nintendo. What the hell did you do that for? I'm not a Nintendo fanboy anymore. Oh, Jesus Christ. I wasn't even supposed to be here today. Oh, boy. You're tired of filming already. What the hell is this? Oh, oh me. Right. I forgot my Scooby game. Oh, and pardon me. I'm going to play some Xbox 360. I might even join you in that exchange. But before that, just remember, it's not, not just, just life. life. It's game life. <laughs> Sparky move. Thank you. <laughs> Sparky move. Welcome to Game Life Episode 7 from the Gamers Lounge. I'm Dave, and today you're gonna get another official dose of gaming goodness. In order to show off the multiplayer aspects <laughs> of. You're just sitting there! Yeah. Uh, what do I need to do? Tape your mouth shut? <laughs>